before we begin worship this morning, good morning to everyone. We want to make sure that everyone is socially distanced. Um, Good morning, people of God. Good morning. Those here in person and those who are, have joined us on the Lomax website, on Facebook, or whatever virtual um, instrument you have chosen, we welcome you to our service today where we are celebrating Global Mission Sunday, focusing on the theme Zion, meaning all of God's people. Are you able and willing to give? The call to worship. Let us worship on this Global Mission Sunday with a willing heart to serve God by serving the needs of others. As we worship, let us direct our adoration to God and not to humans. This comes from Ephesians, the sixth chapter and the seventh verse. The invocation. Dear God, we come willingly and freely to give thanks for the grace you have granted all of us. As beneficiaries of your grace, we extend that grace to others. We recognize that too often our flesh is weak. Our spirits are unwilling to help others. Please give strength to our flesh and keep our spirits in tune with your Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, so that we might continue serving and sharing what we have with those who have nothing and less than we. Help us to share with others as you share with us. Help us to give to others as you give through us. Help us to spread agape love to others as you demonstrate that agape love to us. We pray this prayer in Jesus' name, amen. amen. Our hymn of praise this morning is Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing.
I will be joined in the responsive reading by Ms. Donna Ganey. As we worship God and we work to support the mission and work of God, we serve willingly and not out of compulsion. All men, women, boys and girls brought offerings to support the work of God. We bring our gifts as free will offerings to God. It is God who gives us our gifts to give, love to lavish, and the ability to share what we are able to share. We give what we give as given by God and for God's pleasure. Watch and pray that God will give us from stagnancy and stubbornness in sharing. Help us to have willing spirits to give generously and strengthen our flesh when we are tempted to withhold what we can share. We rejoice in being able and being willing to give. Everything Amen. we have comes from you, O God, and from and the, the things, things we have, have we, we willingly share with others. others. This is coming from First Chronicles, the 29th chapter and the 14th verse. The affirmation of faith. That which we believe and that which we profess to believe. Please stand. I believe in God the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. We will now have our scripture lesson from Ms. Donna Ganey. Psalms 137, the New International Version. By the rivers of Babylon we sat and wept when we remembered Zion. There on the poplars we hung our harps. For there our captors asked us for songs, our tormentors demanded songs of joy. They said, sing us one of the songs of Zion. How can we sing the songs of, of the Lord while in a foreign land? If I forget you, Jerusalem, may my right hand forget its skill. May my tongue cling to the roof of my mouth if I do not remember you, if I do not consider Jerusalem my highest joy. Remember, Lord, what the Edomites did on the day Jerusalem fell. Tear it down, they cried, tear it down to its foundations. Daughter Babylon, doomed to destruction. Happy is the one who repays you according to what you have done to us. Happy is the one who seizes your infants and dashes them against the rocks. May the Lord have a blessing in the reading of his word. Amen. We'll have our prayer hymn by the music ministry.
all wise and gracious God, as we humbly attempt to enter into thy holy presence, we pray, God, that you would give us a clean heart because we know, God, that where you are, hatred cannot dwell. Sin cannot dwell. Anger cannot dwell. Jealousy cannot dwell. And so, God, if there be anything in us that is not like you, we pray, God, that you would give us a clean heart. Because, God, we recognize that you are perfect in every way. Your love is perfect. Your provision is perfect. Your protection is perfect. Your mercy is perfect. Your judgment is even perfect. Your justice is perfect. And we are imperfect. And so, God, we thank you for Jesus Christ, whose blood covers a multitude of sin. It covers those times when we don't show love to you and to others. It covers those times, God, when we doubt whether you're going to show up in our lives and our situations. It covers those times when we're more worried about the haves than the have-nots. It covers those times, God, when your children are at war down here below. So we thank you for Jesus Christ. We thank you for his example. But most importantly, God, we, we thank you that he went to the cross because he loved the whole world. Not just me and not just those who are in the Amy Zion church and not just those who have money and not just those who are white or those who are black, but he died for the sins of the whole world. And in that, I am included. So we thank you, God, that Jesus died for the sins of the world. And not only did he die for the sins of the world, but he got up so that we might have hope and have life everlasting. That means, God, when we're down in the pits of hell in our life, it means that we can get up in Jesus' name. It means when there's darkness all around us in our lives, that light will come through in Jesus' name. It means that when there's despair and no one thinks that we have a way out, that there's hope in Jesus' name. So we thank you for Jesus. We thank you for the presence of the Holy Spirit in the world in this place, whether in person or virtual, and more importantly, in this space that we occupy. Thank you for the Spirit moving and having its way in our lives. Thank you for the things that the Spirit does that we don't even recognize, but we give thanks nonetheless. God, you are a good God, and your name is due all of the praise. Somebody has a testimony this morning about how God brought them through this week. We don't know what they've gone through. We don't know how the two ends would not meet but for you. We don't know the healing that someone experienced. We don't know the reminder that someone experienced that you're not done with them, but we thank you, God, for showing up nonetheless. But there's someone here that's holding on to the end of their rope there, Wondering, God, if you can do it again. And so, God, we intercede on their behalf. And we call on the name of Jesus. And, and we remind them that God can do anything but fail. And so, God, we, we thank you for victories already won. We thank you for healings that are, are just waiting for us. We thank you, God, for provision that will come out of nowhere. We thank you for your protection, God. Oh, God, if we had a thousand tongues, we couldn't praise your name enough. You are so awesome and worthy to be praised. And so, God, as we go through the rest of this worship experience, let us not worship you out of form or fashion, but let's worship you, God, in spirit and in truth, reminding us, God, of who you are and whose we are. 
And then God, when this worship experience is done and, and we're called to go back out into your world, let our light so shine that men, women, boys, and girls might come running to us and say, what must I do to be saved? Let us be a light in a dying world. Let us be hands in a world that needs to be touched. Let us be love, God, for people who know no love. Why? Because you first loved us. And so, God, we thank you for this brief moment just to bow on bended knee and bow with humble hearts to lift these petitions up. And it's in the wonderful, matchless, and marvelous name of Jesus, who is the Christ and who is coming back again. It's in the very strong name of Jesus we pray. And let everyone say amen, amen, and amen. Yes, there's something about that name. And you know, the something is different for each and every one of us and what God has done in our lives. This is Global Mission Sunday where we focus on the global work that we are all called to do and especially in this branch of Zion. And so we want to continue to make the appeal for those who would give especially for global missions work. As we continue our work in Zimbabwe at the Rose of Charity Orphanage, as we look to support mission efforts for those who are suffering in Haiti, as well as those who were subject to the last hurricane in New Orleans. And as we prepare to receive our offering, we're going to now play a video that was recorded by a woman who actually is a childhood friend of mine. And um, she has done great missions work in Haiti. And she's gonna share a little bit about her experiences doing missions work in Haiti. And so we'll receive the video at this time um, and then we'll pray over our offering. Morning. My name is Valerie Lattimore, and I'm a childhood friend of your pastor, Pastor Nelson. And I'm honored to be here with you this morning to talk about my personal experience and reflections on two mission trips to Haiti, the Jewel of the Caribbean. And so playing in the background of just some photos I have from my trip um, to share with you, I actually went on two missions trip in 2015 and again in 2017. I call myself an unexpected missionary because growing up in the AME Zion Church, I did not expect to be a missionary. Um, I thought that was something that other people did. I didn't even feel that I was qualified, like I knew the Bible well enough to do that. But um, in the spring of 2014, some members of my church here in Kenosha, Wisconsin, where I live, who are Haitian born, one's an American citizen, one still holds his citizenship in Haiti, presented to those who were interested about going on a missions trip to Haiti. And I fell in love with this beautiful, beautiful country. Um, I, wanted, I decided to go one, it was close by and it was an affordable trip for me. And also the people looked like me, that was important. A lot of the trips that my church um, went on were either too far away um, to, to Africa or to parts of Europe or Asia. 
or the people there just didn't look like me. So that was important for me. I was a bit apprehensive and a bit scared um, as I prepared for it. You know, when I get sick, I have some digestive issues. So, you know, was I going to be able to tolerate the food? I'd heard all of a lot of negative things about Haiti. So I wasn't sure what I was going to expect there. I heard a lot that it was a dangerous place. And so I had some concerns going into it. In addition, just will I be a qualified missionary? Will I know the right thing to say at the right time? But I'm prayed on it. Um, I prayed with some people, some family members and some friends who are close to me and God laid it on my heart to, to go step out on faith and do this. So my first trip was in November of 2015. And you'll see some pictures from our team a little bit later on in the video. But it was a wonderful opportunity for me to go and to spend time in Haiti and to get to know people. Our trip was focused on doing work with the orphanage and a school that our church sponsored in Haiti. And I don't recall the name of it, but a lot of our work had to do with construction. So you'll see some pictures of a school that we helped build. There were many organizations, uh, many groups, church groups that came in that were part of this building process. But um, as the videos, pictures come up, you'll see the part that we contributed, and then you'll see what the final product looked like about a year later. Um, Pastor Nelson gave me. There are several different ways that I do contribute to Haiti, even today. I sponsor a child at the school where, um, actually two children at the school that my church here in Kenosha helps to support with food. That's a simple $10 a month and it helps to provide food for the children during lunchtime. Similar to some children in our country, many, um, most children in Haiti, they don't eat a whole lot and the food that they do get is at school. That's the similarity to the United States. So the money that we were able to give each person about $10 does help to um, feed the children um, for that month. I also have a child that I actually sponsor in the country of Haiti. That's a little bit of a larger investment that I do. And I've been sponsoring him for about three years now. And for a short time, as I was also sponsoring a friend's child um, to go to school in Haiti. So that's kind of how I have my continuing support with Haiti. The impact of the work that I did there, both when I was in country those two times, as well as since then, really has been a lot, has a lot to do with the financial um, contributions that I've given to sponsor. Um, a young girl was able to go to school for the three years that I was able to sponsor her. We were able to build and improve upon some schools that were already there. My church went through um, Compassion International. So they were kind of our sponsoring organization that sent us there. One thing I'm very happy to meet, say is I met a lot of friends there. Our interpreters and our drivers were all Haitian nationals, all men. And so they worked right alongside with us. And to this day, we actually are friends. And a lot of us from our trip have maintained friendships. So that's really nice to have some friends in a different country. I pray for them all the time. I pray for the. What are some things that I gained out of the trip? First of all, my spiritual life definitely improved. Um, I had to, This was totally a walk of faith for me to go on this missions trip. And actually, I, I, again, I went to Tua to Haiti, but I've also been to Puerto Rico and to Panama. God just laid that spirit on my heart. And so my relationship with God has gotten stronger. I also had the opportunity to fellowship, not just with the Christians from our church that went, but with um, the many Christians um, that are in Haiti. Our interpreters and our drivers, they their faith is so incredibly strong. They faced horrible conditions every day. Many of them, if it weren't for the missionaries coming down through compassion and, and the work that they get through that, they won't be able to feed their families. And I know that many of my friends now are struggling very much to um, even just put basic food on the, on the plates for their families. But their faith is so strong. Speak to your spirit about how you can support Haiti. Tom's is another way. They do produce shoes in Haiti. Um, if you're able to do that, please do. Um, here are some pictures of the artwork that I was trying to share with you. Some of their street vendors and some of them are from um, the Papillon and the Apparent Project.
And there actually is a website down there, papianmarketplace.com. I get no royalties from them, but it does help um, the people in Haiti who are working there as a fair wage job. So with that, I want to say God bless you. Thank you, Reverend Nelson, for giving me this opportunity. Thank you to the tech team for your patience and grace with me with this. And if I can be of any help or answer any questions, please, please let me know. Reverend Nelson, um, if people want to get in contact with me, you've got my contact information and I'll let you share that at your discretion. But thank you very much. And as always, please pray for Haiti. They need you, but it's a beautiful country that I know that they can turn them turn some things around so that it's a place where we can go back both as missionaries and hopefully one day as tourists as well. Thank you. Say several things. Uh, we want to be reminded that we never know where God is going to take us in ministry. Valerie and I grew up together um, at Clinton and Zion Church and we were part of the youth group there. And we used to sit on the back row and we half listened to service and we have participated, but you never know where God is gonna take you in terms of the ministries that you're engaged in when you keep your hand in God's hand. So I wanna thank Valerie for agreeing to do this for us for Global Mission Sunday. And as Valerie already said, we wanna um, just celebrate our media team for taking her pictures and recording her and putting together the video. So we wanna thank uh, Brother Roy and Brother Murray for everything they did to put that presentation together. Um, we thank those members of Lomax who have already given towards supporting Haiti. That money will be sent out this week so that it can get to those who need it. And so you have one final opportunity to give towards Global Mission Sunday and to the work in Haiti. Um, and we would pray now that God would bless all the gifts that have been given already. So would you bow your heads with me? Heavenly Father, we thank you for being a chance to bless others, giving us a chance, God, to take the gifts that you've given us and to really use them for the glory of your kingdom. We thank you for willing spirits that have given, and we thank you, God, for uh, what we know this offering is going to do in the lives of those who've been devastated in so many ways. So God, we give your name the praise, honor, and glory for all gifts that we receive. And it's in the name of Jesus we pray. Let everyone say, amen. As we prepare for the sermon this morning, we will ask our music ministry to come with our hymn of preparation.
when, you know, you can sing like that when you actually are living what you're singing about, amen? As we prepare for our message this morning, there is a video that I would ask that the tech team would play now, and then we will pray. A humanitarian crisis at America's border with Mexico has become a full crisis of conscience for the U.S. Department of Homeland Security. It is tragic and it is heartbreaking. For more than three weeks, the border bridge connecting Del Rio, Texas with Mexico has served as the only shelter for thousands of Haitian migrants. Many having fled a country devastated by natural disasters and political turmoil, only to arrive to a hellish landscape with squalid conditions. This woman says kids are starving to death and several people are sick. Thousands have already been deported back to Haiti under a policy imposed by Donald Trump, which uses the pandemic as a reason to deny them from crossing the border. We have reiterated that our borders are not open and people should not make the dangerous journey. Families and asylum seekers are all that's taken for processing, but it isn't deterring the flood of migrants who face an aggressive response from border agents, some on horseback using intimidation to keep people off American soil. I don't think anyone seeing that footage uh, would think it was acceptable or appropriate. DHS has referred the matter for internal investigation, and the vice president, who is tasked with handling the immigration crisis, is pushing back on critics who argue the White House is either doing too much or too little to help migrants. Talk about a country that has just experienced so much uh, tragedy. They leave when they cannot satisfy their basic needs. Many of these people fled Haiti years ago and have lived since then in South America, making them ineligible for asylum. And so that's also part of the equation as to how, why they can return to country. In May, Haitian immigrants already in the U.S. were granted protected status, but not those trying to cross now, who under this pandemic, seeking a new life, are seen as a public health threat. Reggie Chikini, Global News, Washington. In Exodus, the second chapter, beginning at verse 15b, we find these words. But Moses fled from Pharaoh. He settled in the land of Midian and sat down by a well. The priest of Midian had seven daughters. They came to draw water and filled the troughs to water the father's flock. But some shepherds came and drove them away. Moses got up and came to their defense and watered their flock. When they returned to their father well, he said, how is it that you have come back so soon today? They said, an Egyptian helped us against the shepherds. He even drew water for us and watered the flock. He said to his daughters, where is he? Why did you leave the man? Invite him to break bread. Moses agreed to stay with the man and gave Moses his daughter Zipporah in marriage. She bore a son and he named him Gershom, for he said, I have been an alien residing in a foreign land. I have been an alien residing in a foreign land. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the way your spirit has moved in this service today. And we now pray, God, that your spirit would continue to have its way in this preaching moment. We pray, God, that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart will be acceptable unto thee. For, Lord, you are my strength and my redeemer. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. This week, we were all disturbed by video footage similar to what we just watched of Haitian refugees being mistreated by U.S. Border Patrol agents on horseback. For many of us, the images we saw conjured up me memories of the treatment of our enslaved ancestors in this country. For many of us, it was simply a present day display of inhumanity being visited upon a vulnerable group of people. For those who've missed the events about which I speak, 
This week, a camp developed under a bridge in Del Rio, Texas, of Haitians seeking refuge in the United States. Some were Haitians who fled to South and Central America after the major earthquake that took place in 2010. Others were more recent refugees from Haiti who have fled deplorable conditions due to the lingering effects of both the 2010 earthquake, the recent political coup, and natural disasters, including a 7.2 magnitude earthquake and tropical storm Grace, both in the months of August. The needs have always been great in Haiti for those that are too numerous to mention. The needs for missionary outreach is obvious and we thank our guest, Valerie Lattimore, for sharing her experiences doing missionary outreach work in Haiti. Yes, there is missions work to be done globally, and we thank Lomax's missionaries for deciding last year that we as a church would focus our mission efforts on a quarterly basis upon the Rose of Charity Orphanage in Zimbabwe. This year, we will continue with that effort in Zimbabwe as we also share resources with those in Haiti. Today, however, as we focus our thoughts on those who are seeking asylum in the United States, those who are seeking refuge in the United States from Haiti, from Afghanistan, and from other parts of the world, God would have us to focus on the subject, aliens among us, aliens among us. If you want to have a good debate or argument or conversation, ask someone whether they believe there are aliens among us. My family will tell you that I love a good television show about extraterrestrials and UFO conspiracy theories, but those are not the aliens among us God would have us to focus on today. No, God would have us focus on the resident aliens who are among us. In Leviticus 19.33, which is part of God's holiness code, where he shared what is required of the people of God in order to live in moral and to live moral and holy lives, we find these words. When an alien resides with you in your land, you shall not oppress the alien. The alien who resides with you shall be to you as the citizens among you. You shall love the alien as yourself, for you were aliens in the land of Egypt. I am the Lord, your God. Yes, it was God's command that the Israelites not oppress aliens, but rather that they be treated as if they were citizens among them. These are not my political views. These are the words of God. In Leviticus 19.34, uh, we see that it has an application to today's immigration debate. God would say, if you would not run down US citizens on horseback, then don't run down Haitians on horseback. If you would not use the reins of a horse or a whip to intimidate US citizens, then don't use them on Haitian refugees. If you would not racially profile US citizens, then don't racially profile Afghani refugees. If you would not discriminate against US citizens, then don't discriminate against black and brown people who are seeking refuge in America. Today, God is asking, America, do you no longer ascribe to the words of Emma Lazarus that are enshrined on the Statue of Liberty? Give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to breathe free. The wretched refuge of your teeming shore. Send these, the homeless, tempest tossed to me. I lift my lamp beside the golden door. In our text for today, found in Exodus 2, we encounter Moses as a, a resident alien himself. We do recognize that Exodus is a book about liberation and a people, the Hebrews, who, who yearn to experience freedom in that land that God had promised them, a land flowing with milk and honey. We do recognize that every human has an inborn desire to experience freedom and to live in a land flowing with milk and honey, which the United States of America is considered to be such a land. That is why there are aliens among us, because of the desire of Europeans and Asians and Latinos and Africans 
who had a desire to experience the milk and honey of America. Enslaved Africans who were forcibly brought to America are the only transplants to America who did not voluntarily immigrate here. And so America is a country of immigrants despite what European immigrants to America would have us believe. As we will see in our text, often immigration is, is tied to oppression and oppressive conditions. Can I say that again? Often immigration is tied to oppression and oppressive conditions. In other words, those who come here are coming here from somewhere, somewhere where they've been oppressed, somewhere where they haven't had enough to eat, somewhere where the hand of the man has been on their back. Because anybody knows that all of us love our homeland. Why would you leave your homeland to come to a foreign country unless you had no other options before you? And so immigration is born out of people being oppressed. Moses in our text had taken a life. Moses had engaged in an act of violence which caused him to flee and to be an immigrant. But as some theologians would say that while Moses did commit an act of, of violence, that act of violence was necessary because he was going against oppression that was happening against the Hebrew people. As Christians, when we see aliens among us, we should always understand that for a person to leave their homeland, which gives them national and ethnic identity, and to come to a foreign land, they've got to be pressing some, facing some oppression, whether it's in Haiti or in Afghanistan or El Salvador or in Cuba or in Vietnam or in Germany or in Poland. The list could go on and on. Their song is captured in the words of Psalm 137. How could we sing the Lord's song in a foreign land? If I forget you, O Jerusalem, let my right hand wither. Let my tongue cling to the roof of my mouth. If I do not remember you, if I do not set Jerusalem above my highest joy. The aliens among us have always lamented for their homeland, even as they sought refuge in a foreign land. For if there were not oppressive conditions, they would not have come here. And so we encounter Moses going from being powerful to powerless as he's fleeing from the consequences of confronting oppression in Egypt. We see in verse 15 of our text in Exodus 2, we find these words, but Moses fled from Pharaoh. He settled in the land of Midian and sat down by a well. Moses was a refugee. Moses was an alien, a resident alien, who could have been found under a bridge in Texas. He could have been found at the border in Central America. He could have been found many places, but he's found by a well in Midian. We find Moses by a well. We do know that in scriptures, wells are signs of hope. Abraham's servant, Rebecca, was found by a well by Jacob, and Jacob found Rachel by a well, and Hagar and Ishmael were saved by a well as they fled from Abraham and Sarah, and Jesus met a Samaritan woman by a well. Yes, wells are signs of hope, signs of refreshing, signs of God's presence in the lives of those who find themselves in trouble. Today, God is saying that we are called to be a well to those who are aliens among us. We can be a well of hope through our giving. We can be a well of hope in the, the way that we serve those who are aliens among us. We can be a well of hope in the way that we treat those aliens among us. Moses found himself an alien in Midian. What we know about Midian is that it was situated east of the River Jordan, east of the Dead Sea. And while Midian was not part of what would come to be known as the Promised Land, it was in Midian where Moses first encountered God. Lomax, if I, I really had some time to deal with this text and, and talk about what is, goes on with this text, there's a character in our text by the name of Jethro. He's Moses' future father-in-law. He was known as the priest of Midian. And the belief is that it was Jethro, the priest of Midian, a, a person of color 
who first introduced Moses to Yahweh, who would become his God. That there were some folks who already knew God, who already knew this figure that was up on the mountain, that the Hebrews didn't know this God until they were introduced to this God by people of color. Uh, you know that it's not unusual when we learn things from people of other cultures. You see, we don't want people in our country because we don't think we can learn anything from them. But imagine if Moses had never been introduced to God, Yahweh, by the priest of Midian, if that's what's really happened. Imagine if he didn't have his burning bush experience because somebody told him about a God that was above all gods, a, a person who happened to be a, a person of color, and, and he learned about the one who would become his God. There are folks who are flying into our country down at Dallas from Afghanistan who might have something to teach us as people. There are persons from Haiti who are walking across a river who might have something to teach us as Americans, but sometimes we think that we're the only one who has something to give to somebody. That's the beauty of God's humanity, that all God's people have value, and we have to treat them like they all have power and value. And so Moses, now powerless, is no longer a part of the power structure He's an alien in a foreign land, and he finds himself by a well at Midian. Our text says that the, the priest of Midian, Jethro, had seven daughters. These shepherdesses had come to draw water at the well in order to water their father's flock. But some shepherds came and drove them away. In other words, some male shepherds came and blocked the female shepherdesses from getting water at the well. Moses, who had grown up in Pharaoh's house, was about to go from being the prince of Egypt to the shepherd for Israel. To borrow from last week's sermon, in his new role as a, a shepherd for Israel, one who would liberate Israel from bondage in Egypt and lead them through the wilderness, the shepherd of Israel had an anointing on him. He had an assignment, and he was about to go on attack for Jethro's daughters. You know what we said about when shepherds fight on your behalf, they win, and this shepherd of Israel was about to fight for Jethro's daughters. And so Moses, seeing these daughters of Jethro being mistreated, it says he got up and he came to their defense and he watered their flocks. A, a stronger understanding of the Hebrew that's used there would say that Moses saved them. He rescued them. This resident alien, this alien among them, saved and rescued Jethro's daughters. Do we see aliens among us as people who could rescue us? Do we see aliens among us as those who can save us, who can contribute to our society, who have value? When Jethro got wind that a, a resident alien that his daughters said were Egyptian, even though he was now identifying as Hebrew, had saved his daughters from the oppressive shepherds, that he had drawn water for Jethro's flocks, and that he had watered Jethro's flocks. Jethro said to his daughters, where is he? Why did you leave the man? Invite him to break bread. It is in verse 20 that we find the lesson in our text. As we celebrate Global Mission Sunday 2021, as we watch displaced Afghanis needing places and communities in which to live, as we witness Haitians being placed on planes and deported back to deplorable conditions, as we observe Latinos being corralled on the Mexican side of the border, our text for today teaches us that as it relates to the aliens among us, God demands that we demonstrate hospitality toward them. Remember, God said in Leviticus, when an alien resides with you in your land, you shall not oppress the alien. The alien who resides with you shall be treated as a citizen among you. You shall love the alien as yourself, for you were aliens in the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. Jethro extended hospitality toward Moses, the alien among them. And by doing so, he obeyed what was the command and will of God. And so in verse 20, we can see three things that we're commanded to do as it relates to the aliens among us. Point number one, we are called to eat with aliens among us. That's right, eat with aliens among us. 
Jethro told his daughters to invite Moses to break bread with him. Eating with someone is one of the highest forms of hospitality that one could engage in during Moses' time, during Jesus' time, and even unto today. Even unto today in our own community as black folks, giving somebody some food and then sitting down and sharing with them is something that indicates hospitality and fellowship and love. And it says, you have value to me. We may not be able to eat with those who are at the border, but we can support agencies that make sure that they have some food and are treated in a humane way. Not to mention, there are churches who feed immigrants who are new to our country. There are churches that are already lined up to be stations where people can be fed, to be places where people can be housed, because that is the work of God in our society today. What is most important is that we be willing to have a spirit to break bread, to eat with those who are considered to be aliens among us. The second thing that we see in our text is that we have to be willing to extend ourselves to the aliens among us. Extend ourselves to the aliens among us. Jethro extended his whole household to Moses. Look at verse 21. It says, Moses agreed to stay with Jethro. He allowed Moses, this stranger, this alien, to enjoy his whole household. Do you know that there are churches that make their outreach to sponsor families in their own very homes? What a wonderful witness that is to Jesus Christ. Yes, for many of us, that might be a bridge too far, but I'm telling you that there are those who see their mission as opening their homes to those around the world who have no place to stay. And if we were unwilling to extend ourselves in that way, at least we can extend ourselves some kind of way to support those who need housing, who need clothing, who need food, because we are all children of God. And at some point in our life, we've all stood in the need of a little help. Not only should we be willing to eat with aliens among us and extend ourselves to aliens among us, but we also have to be willing to enter into solidarity with the aliens among us. How did Jethro do this? How did Jethro enter into solidarity with Moses, the alien among them? He gave Moses one of his daughters in marriage. Her name was Zipporah. You do know that Zipporah was a black woman. And the belief is that Zipporah came from Egypt. And so he had a, a tie to us anyway. And I love to point that out because there are those of us who like to say that the, the, the Christianity is a white man's religion. We are all up in the Bible. We're all connected to things that happened in the Bible. And so Moses' first wife was a black woman. We might not be willing to give our children to be married to the aliens among us, but we can be willing to do different things which call us to partner with the aliens among us, teaching the aliens the ways of America, the history of America, including our plights, job skills, life skills, giving employment opportunities. There are so many non-traditional ways for us to do missions work and to take care of the aliens among us. Missions work that goes beyond wearing these stoles and wearing white dresses and, and doing the stuff that we always do. We have to expand our imagination about what missions calls for us to do. And when we're willing to eat with the aliens among us and to extend ourselves to the aliens among us and enter into partnerships with the aliens among us, both the alien and our society will be blessed for it. You see, the partnership between Moses and Zipporah resulted in a son, and that son's name is Gershom. Look at it in the text. And Moses said that he named his son this because it means, I have been an alien residing in a foreign land. Ger means alien and Shom means there. An alien I am is one interpretation. Another is, I was an alien there. Moses recognized how he had been blessed being an alien in Midian. Moses now set out to mark that occasion by naming his son that I have been an alien among you. He recognized now that he had some work to do, that he needed to go 
and to work to, to free some folks and, and to do some things and to seek freedom and liberation and get those who are impressed out of their oppressive situations. As I prepare to take my seat, you know the rest of Moses' story. This alien went back and, and freed his people. Leviticus 19 continues to remind us that God commands us to treat aliens right because Israel was once an alien in a foreign land. But lest we forget that while there are aliens among us, I'm reminded that Jesus was an alien among us. He came from heaven on high. He was not treated with hospitality. He was rejected by men. He was spat upon. He was hit. He was bruised. He was disfigured. But it was an alien among us who came to love the whole world. He came that whosoever believeth in him would have eternal life. Can you imagine if Jesus had not been an alien among us? Can you imagine if he had not walked among us? And if he had not come down to abide with us? Jesus and God are always on the side of aliens, on the side of those who are disinherited. Well, if that's not enough to make you excited about why we ought to be engaged in missions work, I came by to remind somebody that all of us are aliens. All of us, this is not our home. We might have physical addresses. We might have church addresses. We might have email addresses. But this is not our home. We are aliens abiding in a foreign place because I was not created for this world or this time. I have a God that I got separated from. And Jesus came so that I might have a bridge to go back home. And so understand that the way we treat others is the way that we will be treated. We are all aliens on a sojourn down here on this land. And all of us are called to treat everybody, black or white, Jew or Gentile, Haitian or Somalian. It doesn't matter where people come from. You know why? Because they all have the breath of God in them. Every one of us has the breath of God in us. And we better remember that we gotta treat people right. Because that's God walking with you and among you. Aliens. There are aliens among us. And every once in a while we need to be reminded that we too are aliens waiting to get back home with God. Won't you pray with me? God, we thank you for reminding us of what you did for us yeah. on Calvary. I know sometimes, God, we get it twisted and, and we think we're somebody. We think our little clothes make us somebody, our little cars make us somebody, our little jobs make us somebody, even our little titles make us somebody. But all of us, God, have been aliens in this foreign land. And we thank you, Jesus, that, that you came to die for us so that we know that we will have an eternal home. And so, God, if there's anybody among us today who doesn't have that pathway back to the Father that can only be found in Jesus Christ, if that's you, won't you just pray right where you are? God, I recognize that I'm in a foreign place and a foreign space, and I want to spend the rest of my life and all of eternity with God. And so I'm willing to confess with my mouth that Jesus is the Son of God. I'm willing to believe in my heart that he died and that he was raised on the third day and that he is coming back again. If you're here and you've been majoring in the minors and God reminded you today that we've got some work to do because we're all aliens and they're aliens that we need to serve. If you've been reminded of that, won't you just give God the glory right now. And then if you're listening and you don't have a church home and you want to make Lomax your church home where you can do the work of kingdom building with the people that are known as Lomax Church, just reach out to us so that we can connect with you. God, thank you for this worship experience for your divine presence. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Let everyone say, amen.
right, if all hearts and minds are on one accord, we'll receive our benediction at this time. Aliens among us, and now unto him who was able to keep us from falling, unto him who was able to present us before the throne with exceedingly great joy, to the all-wise God be glory and majesty, both now and forevermore, and let the people of God say, service. I know we've said the benediction. I just want to, there were two things that slipped my mind. During the week, I would ask that you would keep Sister Renee McNeil in your prayers, who's having a health challenge right now. And also keep Brother uh, Randy Choice in your prayers. He lost his, his brother this week. So now you may extinguish the candles. Please keep them in missed.